I like to periodically remind my viewers that I do have an email if you'd like to send tips or feedback or anything, uh, which is tinfoilhatfashion at protonmail.com. And as this page grows, I'm getting more and more comments on my videos. And I find that talking about these comments periodically is a good exercise. And it's a way for me to feel like I'm sort of interacting with the people who are watching this pa page and paying attention. Or even if they're not really people, even if they're just bots, I think there's something to be learned by observing what the bots posted. And uh, sort of reverse engineering the mind behind the agenda of these uh, artificial intelligence posts. Uh, I also like to remind my viewers periodically that I also welcome donations as well. And that can be done by... Uh, checking the link in uh, all the descriptions of all my videos, which goes to a buymeacoffee.com uh, page. In the past, I've spoken about how some of the views on my pages, which as you can see, I don't get a lot of views, uh, but I've noticed that sometimes they go down magically. And more recently, I've considered the idea that there's web crawlers and bots out there that might register views that later have to be tapered off to reflect a more realistic um, number. But at a certain point, it gets a little ridiculous. And I finally caught this number going down on video for you to see. A few days after I posted this video, the views shot up to 124. So I let my screen sit there and then the next day I hit, I clicked refresh. And then after I clicked refresh, the, the number went from 124 to 82. Then, a, a, you know, maybe 24 hours went by, the number jumped from 82 to 88. And yesterday it was at 88. I clicked refresh and then it went down to this number, 61. And that's what I caught on a video. And I'm going to show you that right now. So watch this number right here. Now I'm sure if you go online on Google or whatever and you look up, you know, this phenomenon, there's someone talking about it and there's someone with a perfectly good explanation, you know, oh, well, yeah, that's just the web crawlers or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But um, I feel like this is a sign that my page is being uh, censored or I don't know what you call it, shadow banned or, you know, the way they sort of limit your reach to, to you know, to people out there. So it's like it's almost like a passive aggressive impersonal type of moderation that's just done automatically. And I just think it's an interesting uh, concept and I, 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 I would like to do a whole blog on, on that topic at some point. I just don't feel like I'm really an expert in it. I haven't re really read any books on it. But if any of you out there you know are listening to what I'm saying here and you're thinking he needs to read this book or he needs to look into this, please let me know. Comment on my pages. You know, comment on this blog, on this video, uh, send me an email. I want to educate myself more on, on AI and bot farms and things like this that control our interactions and the information we get on the internet because I think this is very, very important and I, I think we all need to be more educated on this uh, topic. So without further ado, let's look at some of the recent comments on my pages now. Uh, the Mark Lanigan, Cobain, and Other Mysteries video continues to be the most viewed on my page, I believe. And therefore, it tends to get the most comments. And seems to be the page that the little algorithms out there on the internet are most interested in trying to control the narrative around. And um, specifically, it has to do with the fact that Kurt Cobain was most likely murdered. Transcribed did one day ago said, you might as well go ahead and start claiming Lane Staley was murdered too, boss. That's clearly what you want to believe. I don't think this is a real person, um, but either way, um, I don't want to believe Lane Staley was murdered. I don't want to believe that he OD'd on uh, heroin. I don't want to believe he died, period. What I do want to know is the truth. You know, while I'm gathering information, especially when it has to, to do with an unsolved mystery like Mark Lanigan's death for example we still don't know how he died because nobody told us you know right when he died the media was saying like oh you know the the family's asking for privacy while they mourn and blah 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 and no cause of death has been announced yet 
okay, that's fine. Now here we are, how much, two years later or something, and they've still never provided any uh, follow-up. So we're just supposed to forget about it and be like, oh, it doesn't matter how he died. And uh, D. Starks 360, I think this guy's a Game of Thrones fan. He's commenting on my video, uh, Off the Cuff, episode 21, where I sort of laid out my RJL theory, that is the Reap J. Lamb theory. Basically the idea that um, rock stars... Uh, need to be take an oath where there, a sacrifice has to be made at some point in order for their fame and fortune. So he mentioned uh, Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones, who I talk about in the video. Uh, John Lennon, um, who died on the same date, uh, I think it was December 8th, that Razzle was killed um, by a drunken Vince Neil, who was drunkenly driving a car that crashed, same date as John Lennon's death, December 8th. And uh, that's also the same day that uh, Dimebag Daryl died, the anniversary of John Lennon's death. And I talk about how the strangeness of the fact that um, Vince Neil was driving a, I think it was a 1972 De Tomaso Pantera car, the same car that Pantera named themselves after. And I found an interview confirming that, by the way. I didn't know about Badfinger. That's an... Badfinger's a band I've been interested in looking more into as well uh, because I've long wondered what the hell Bad Motorfinger means, the title of Soundgarden's uh, early 90s album, and I wondered if there was a connection with Bad Motor with Badfinger, the band, who uh, I guess there's some deaths there too. I, I don't recall uh, what specifically that was, but that's something I'm going to have to look into again. Uh, Badfinger, I believe, also backed up uh, George Harrison on his first album. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, I, Danny Witten, I think that song, Tonight's the Night, is about him. Big Brother, Janis Joplin, Hendrix, yes, very sketchy stuff around Hendrix. I believe he was found with, with like a wine bottle in his hand and pill, a bunch of pills halfway down his throat, something awful like that. His uh, manager is, uh, I, I think, is brought up Strange Scenes in the Canyon, and I think Tony Aomi might actually bring up in his book, which is highly recommended reading, by the way. Doors, Jim Morrison. Uh, Grateful Dead, Pigpen. I forgot about Pigpen. Uh, the Birds, Clarence White, and Graham Parsons. All good stuff to look into. Cream, Connor Clapton. I think he's talking about Eric Clapton's son, who I guess like jumped out a window or something like that. Led Zeppelin, Kerak Plant. Uh, Robert Plant had a had a child that died, I think, around the time of physical graffiti or something like that. And if you uh, pay attention, uh, Robert Plant's demeanor does seem to change. Maybe it's just my imagination, but he does seem to become more serious after that, around that time. Okay, finally, D. Starks 360 talks about this RJL theory uh, connected to Game of Thrones. That's very interesting. I, I think that's a coincidence. I don't think there's a connection, you know, intentionally or specifically to, to my theory. Anyway, that's very interesting. Good comments. Lightning Strikes 7314, about a week ago, said, No doubt Slash's bio is fake, and he was groomed for stardom. Gnostic Reclamation Channel claimed Scott Wayland was David Bowie's son. His bio is very convoluted. His real name is Klein, which is really Klein, K-L-E-I-N, so they're working hard to disguise certain ethnic origins for starters. Scott and Waylon suggest a mashup of Kurt Weil slash Scott Walker. Walker recorded the Kurt Weil song Lost in the Stars. Two heroes of David Bowie. Well, that's really interesting. That's, that's stuff I haven't looked into any of that. But um, Scott Waylon did have a particular look to him and, and sort of countenance that I could definitely see uh, being kind of, you know, Bowie-ish. So that, that's very fascinating. These are all, you know, things I haven't looked into that I will probably have to start looking into now. And Nick X Play said, man, I miss Chris. I do too. Chris Cornell. Uh, at Thomas Danielson 7383 said, it's awful, but part of being an H addict. You can't save people. You can only own your part in the whole painfully ugly past. We only care about our own 
selfish addiction, and if it can keep us high. Kurt was just another bad ending that's more common than most normal people understand. And this was a comment on Mark Lanigan, Cobain, and other mysteries. No disrespect, but your own knowledge about your own habit or heroin addicts in general has nothing, has absolutely no bearing on the physical problems with the crime scene. Uh, for starters, there was too much heroin in Kurt's body for him to been, have been able to lift the gun to shoot himself in the head. The gun was also positioned in such a way that didn't make sense with, you know, a certain way the body was found and where the wound was. So you can't explain away things that don't have anything to do with heroin by talking about your heroin habit. This might be a real person. This might be a artificial intelligence. I don't know. Either way, um, nice try. Uh, Lightning Strikes 7314 said on uh, Off the Cuff episode 14, I heard a discussion of Pearl Jam that suggested the name refers to the sticky substance that only men can produce. Pearl because of its color and jam because of its sticky texture. That ties in with the occult via maybe fertility rituals, worship of Horus slash Osiris. It also connects to ritual abuse and MK Ultra. 10 is X in the Roman numeral, a symbol for Saturn slash Satan. It can also be seen as zeros and ones as in digital technology, a kind of Luciferian fire slash light being used to corrupt and enslave humanity. Eddie Vedder contains red devil die when read backwards. Hmm. Red dev hmm. devil. Oh, that's interesting. I sense there's some homoerotic strain running through the wood slash Vetter slash Cornell access. Interesting that Vetter is the last man standing when he's the least interesting or talented of the bunch. His backstory seems fake and contrived. He's also friends with shills like Sean Penn. I think this might be a real person posting this. And um, on that note, you know, I know it probably sounds like any bad post I'm saying has got to be a fake bot and any good post is uh, got to be a real human. That's not true, actually. And there's going to be some examples of this I'll show you. Um, but this this strikes me as it might be a real person. And there's some, they're probably European because C-O-L-O-U-R, that's the European spelling of color. Um, there's a lot of stuff I never thought of here. Um, you know, Pearl Necklace, if you heard that song by ZZ Top, we know what that's about, right? So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Pearls are white, the consistency of jam, you know, the whole, I talk a lot about the generative force and how Crowley used that in his stuff and how Freemasons have the generative force and that all makes sense. The thing about Red Devil Die in, in Eddie Vedder's name, that's really interesting too. Never even thought of that. So I love this kind of stuff. If, if you have any little anecdotes like this, please comment or uh, email them to me. All right. User Mr. Bot Fake Algorithm said, here's what annoys me. Kurt was a junkie. If he wanted to kill himself, he'd have just overdosed on the biggest shot of smack possible and went blissfully. Chris Barnett-ZK8IY said, I don't know about this whole ordeal, but I do believe that Mark fell back off the wagon at the end. On top of that, he got COVID and his body was too weak. As I said earlier, we don't know uh, how Mark Lanigan died because he died in Ireland and they never gave us a cause of death. They said, you know, oh, leave the family alone, you know, give them their privacy, let them mourn. Uh, we'll tell you later. And then they never did. They never told us how he died. So if you go on Reddit and you look around and stuff, um, the general consensus among those venturing, I guess, are, are stating that he fell off the wagon. Nobody really knows. You know, he survived COVID. So this assumption that, you know, he was weak from COVID and then had a relapse. I mean, these are all assumptions. So this person just venturing a guess, and that's fine. If it is a person, that is. Do I think it's possible that he relapsed and simply OD'd? Sure. Yeah, it's possible. Or that he perhaps took the vaccine and that's what killed him. You know, the bottom line is, it, it seems like someone doesn't want the public to know. I think that's it's pretty safe to say that that is an established fact. You know, the controllers of Mark Lanigan's estate or whatever, his story, his narrative, do not want us knowing how he died. And that should give us reason to ask questions. You might not agree with that, and that's fine. 
Okay, Mosaic Skulls 8071 said, I dated Kurt's nanny Stacy. You got Tom all wrong. Mark was at place from my research, always outside by greenhouse. You know, it, it would it would lend your, your comment a lot more legitimacy if you just bothered to write it out in a way that didn't sound so kind of like you had 10 other things on your mind and you just sort of jotted this down halfway thinking about it. I mean, listen, you know, listen to this sentence. Mark was at place from my research, always outside by, what do you mean always outside by the green? I mean, it's, I know what he's saying. I know what he's talking about. I know, I know the point he's trying to make. Um, okay, so you dated Kurt's nanny. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. How do we know? But what sort of authority is she? What did she say to you? Tell us what she said. What did she tell you? You know, you're, you're giving us this little hint like, I know this and I know that. Well, tell us what you know. You know, I mean, this is very unhelpful. Uh, you got Tom all wrong. Well, what do I have wrong? What do you know about Tom that I don't know? I'd like to hear it. You know, uh, Mark was in front of the greenhouse like he said he was in his book, I think is what this is intending to say. And uh, Tom was the investigator who went to the house with Dylan and he flat out said, no, 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 he wasn't there. And he even laughed. If you think you know better than the detective that Courtney Love hired, you know, if you're going to comment like this, provide more information. And if you don't want to provide more information, send it privately. Email it to me. Uh, at Built to be Driven said, bullshit. Um, what, what's bullshit? The, everything I said? Or are you just angry because what I'm saying is angering you and you agree with me? I, I don't know how to interpret that. I assume you're just going, I don't like your page. And that's kind of what you're doing. You're just sticking your head in the, in the door and going, shut up. And then you're leaving. Uh, Joy Hoover 4828 said, A pearl is formed from irritation. A necreous mass formed in the shell of a bivalve mollusk as a result of irritation caused by a foreign body. Jam can also be used as a verb to press tightly. Transitive 1719 to become wedged. Intransitive 1706 of unknown origin, perhaps a variant of Middle English cham to bite upon something, gnash the teeth, late 14th century C. Champ, of a malfunction in the moving parts of machinery by 1851, sense of cause interference in radio signals, is from 1914, meaning play in a jam session, is from 1935, related, jammed jamming, from the online etymology dictionary, the mission is to irritate, disrupt, and cause malfunction, when you look at the Jeremy video, it was part of a number of things ushering in school shootings. You know, that's a good little bit of research there. And I, I, I thank Joy Hoover 4828 for contributing that. Uh, Willie Poe 9026 said, Josh Homme, Dave Grohl, and I would anyone that they associate with our Illuminati buy-ins. I have a fair Roy, Dave killed Kurt for fame. Kurt sings that doesn't have a gun. Dave does on the first Foo Fighters album. Speaking of Ireland, Dave claims to have disappeared there after Kurt's death. All right, so now this is on the Mark Lanigan Coping Other Mysteries page. Here's an example of a post that I could, you know, it seems like it's sort of on the page. Like, yeah, I agree with you. Everything's a conspiracy and Here's what I think. Here's the conspiracies that I think uh, are offshoots of what you're saying. So you would think that I would agree with this. I would be like, yes, thank you for contributing. But I think this might be a but. And the reason is because look at how screwed up the way the sentences sound. And I would anyone that they associate with our Illuminati buy-ins. I guess what he's trying to say is, and I would assume anyone that they associate with, you know, it sounds, I think there's an algorithm here that's trying to imitate the incorrect grammar of someone who's sort of half thinking about what they're posting, like what we saw earlier uh, with the guy who was saying he knew Kurt's nanny. You know, that sounds like it probably is a real human being that's sort of, you know, spaced out a bit while they're posting. They're going to, in order to sound human, they're going to have to have grammatical errors and even and sort of sounding like a person who's in a hurry and not thinking a lot about what they're doing. How do you actually imitate that using artificial intelligence? Well, I think it's it's very hard to do. And I think posts like this show us how, how far off artificial intelligence is.
from being able to perfectly imitate uh, human beings. Now, it's possible this might be a real human. I could be wrong. But my guess is this is uh, artificial intelligence, uh, artificially generated response that has scanned uh, all the material in the, the blog and has generated a response. This person doesn't sound intelligent, and I don't mean to insult you if you are a person. Um, you may be a very intelligent person, but the way you're writing this out makes you seem like not a smart person. So therefore, um, if you're trying to present yourself as a, a follower of the stuff that I post or someone who buys into what you know I uh, talk about here, you, you're, you're showing the world that someone who's probably not that intelligent and who's probably really gullible uh, buys into uh, Joe Gilmore's theories, therefore playing into the agenda of trying to delegitimize what I'm doing here. Again, I don't mean to offend you, whoever this person is, if they are a real human, but I think it's probably a bot. And user, uh, I'm not going to say all that, uh, album 10 has been released on Tuesday, which is Mars Day. That's a really good one because um, in Reap J. Lamb, in one of these, I talk about how the number five, the five band members, and I talk about Red and how it corresponds to Jevra on the Tree of Life and how Jevra corresponds to war, you know, fighting, uh, Red, blood, Mars. Mars is the, you know, the god of war. So that makes a lot of sense. And I looked that up and that's actually true. Uh, 10 was released on a Tuesday. So that's a really good one right there that plays right into the uh, Reap J. Lamb theory, actually. This person said, chopped off top of pyramid also represents the unfinished NWO. Sure, yeah, the, uh, the trapezoid. And by the way, the uh, Church of Satan apparently, uh, before Anton LaVey called it the Church of Satan, it was called the Order of the Trapezoid, I believe. Fog Pumas, one month ago, said, uh, 3950, as someone who basically grew up around tattoo shops, Mark's orientation of the cross isn't blasphemous unless he flips you off. It's placed correctly for a right side up cross. Common misunderstanding from people who don't know tattoos. Because the arm is usually down by your side 95% of your life. He's talking about the uh, observation I made in this video, Mark Lanigan, Cobain, and Other Mysteries. How I, I was sort of talking about how Mark has this cross on the top of his palm, which in this picture here, you can see it's upside down. So when he's flipping you off, he's, he's throwing blasphemy at you. So this person is saying, well, if you know about tattoos, you know that his hand's going to be at his side most of the time. So it's actually a right side up cross. First of all, I doubt Mark Lanigan cares about offending anyone, any Christians. If anything, I think he probably gets a laugh of offending Christians. Most of us don't know Mark, Lan never knew Mark Lanigan personally. Most of Mark Lanigan's fans only see him when he's on stage. When he's on stage, he's grabbing his microphone with his hand. So when he's on stage, the majority of his fans are seeing an upside on cross. So I'm not completely discounting what this person's saying, but I'm just, I'm using logic here to show, you know, where I'm coming from with my response to what he's saying. And I don't really buy it, but that's fine. Uh, Fog Puma's also quoted on, uh, quoted, 2555, I still think Josh Homme is a cop, plays like a narc. I quote Mark Lanigan. In fact, you hear Mark Lanigan say in his own voice how he's going to score drugs with Josh Homme uh, that one night while they're on tour with Screaming Trees. And one of the drug dealers accuses Josh Homme of being a cop. If I had to guess, I would say Josh Homme is probably part of the Illuminati cult and plays some role in the in the bigger picture that we can't possibly know i don't know what that exact title would be some type of i wouldn't call him a cop um this person said hopefully your video here makes youtubers realize they need to be accountable about how accurate they have to be once people start to learn it bothers the heck out of me when i see people read a rumor article and they are replying immediately as if it's actually as if it's factual, LOL. Your replies are well worded. While I appreciate what sounds like a compliment here, the wording is so odd, I wonder if this is a human. So again, here, here's an example, like I said earlier, here's an example of a post that I believe is trying to be complimentary to me, 
but that I'm not sure if it's a real human. Why would there be uh, bots out there trying to be complimentary towards me? Thank you for teaching people how to be accurate. Consider your sources. Be clear with your words. And great point about how you said it's just a your word against mine, no backup with the argument. Again, this sounds complimentary, and I, I appreciate... I apologize if you're a real person and I'm calling you a bot or whatever, but um, I'm kind of on the fence here. You know, what's the purpose of uh, AI bots saying positive things? It could be to sort of present a false representation of who my followers are, or it could just be part of an army of bots who's a certain percentage of them are actually programmed to make positive comments so that when you step back and look at all of the comments, they all sort of blend in with each other and it makes you start second guessing yourself. You know, is this a bot? Is that a bot? And I know this all, that all sounds like a mouthful and it sounds like I'm overthinking this, but believe me, the people who design bots and AI, they think very deeply about all this stuff because they have to, in order to make them sound human, you've got to really get into the minds of people reading. And that's not a simple or easy task. It's extremely complex. And that's why it's hard for, for AI to be convincing because the, the brain is very complex and to attempt to try and imitate the way the brain thinks in an artificial way. I mean, uh, there's a reason why I think uh, AI is the actual antichrist, ultimately. Uh, TF is spirit farm. I can't even watch this. I can't even watch this because that guy literally has his whole head up MK's ass. Yeah, he's, this person's commenting on the uh, interview with Chris Cornell's bodyguard, Martin Kirsten. And the, uh, the self-proclaimed pastor guy who's interviewing him has a podcast called Spirit Farm. And yeah, he's definitely kissing um, Martin Kirsten's ass in that interview. That's kind of the point, is that it, it, the interview seems designed to try and endear Martin Kirsten to Chris Cornell fans. That's my theory about it. Because obviously... Uh, the hit on Chris Cornell came from very high. And there is a certain amount of investment that goes into enforcing the narr narrative around Chris Cornell and uh, Kurt Cobain and others whose deaths are a little bit fishy. And uh, AI algorithms are an efficient way to police all the thinking and police the narrative because the powers that be, they realize that people are watching the news, let the mainstream news less and less. So they've got to get into our heads by getting right in, in front of us in our computers here. And uh, Jeff ZX6RT posted on Off the Cuff episode 17. One thing that's strange to me is the almost Trojan horse-like way they are bringing images of Hitler and Crowley into millions of homes. The, the, the Crowley part seems to check out, because especially when they're throwing Charles Manson's face on the front of a magazine every few years or, you know, the Manson murders and you know, movies about the 60s cults and, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I, I think these are ways that the mainstream media continues to make uh, Crowley relevant by sort of glorifying uh, the trendiness of Satan and Crowley in the 60s. The, the, the cults, I mean, Jimmy Page was, was really into Aleister Crowley, bought one of his castles. You know, uh, Richie Blackmore apparently was really into the occult. It was in vogue. It was cool to be, you know, members of the People that were killed by the Manson family uh, were, were members of, of cults like this. So this wasn't just completely out of the blue. The fascination with cults and stuff like that, I think that's part of why the mainstream and the movies and stuff are, are constantly renewing this. They're constantly reminding us of, uh, of these uh, cults it, because in a way it's a subtle form of promoting them and keeping them relevant, making sure young people like I was not so long ago uh, continually become fascinated with it and get into it and, and grow up to promote it. Uh, Joy Hoover 4828 said, sometimes I feel like a haunted house because I listen to dead artist music. It is very subjective and I don't want to place my own interpretation on someone else's work, but listening to Taylor Hawkins solo work is pretty interesting. He seemed to be fighting against someone and calling them out. He said in an interview that half the songs on his last album were about the good, the bad and the ugly with his wife, but it seems to be more than that. He was very talented as evidenced by his solo projects. I'm interested in your take that these things are planned in advance. 
Maybe these bones were made to be broken. Maybe these paths we have, we take have been chosen. You've got so much to say and no one will tell. And no one to tell. From his song, See You in Hell. It was like he did know what was coming and couldn't get out. A bargain made more than 20 years ago. Well, I, yeah, I, I agree with your observations there. This is a very, this, this poster posts really good stuff. Um, because she seems to be really paying attention to what I'm saying and applying it to knowledge she knows. And so th this is the thing. If we all think about this stuff and we put our heads together, we've all got something to bring to the table. We can solve some of these mysteries. We can figure some of this out. I believe that. And uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes this requires us to entertain ways of thinking that we, we really don't want to entertain, that people might laugh at. They might make fun of you. But um, yeah, I don't... I, I didn't know anything about Taylor Hawkins until I heard he died. And then I started looking in, into him, and he, he, he did seem like a very talented guy. Uh, there's a lot more to this guy than I ever would have given him credit for. And, um, yeah, my, my current thinking is that I do tend to agree. I do tend to think, independent of what you're talking about, independent of these lyrics and stuff, I sort of came to that conclusion that um, I think Taylor Hawkins probably did know that he was – the, sacri the blood sacrifice required. And, um, you know, I, I talk about in a previous blog how the people might behave. Like, how would you behave if there was a Faustian bargain that you knew you were the sacrifice of? And, you, you know, you, you might be afraid to tell people. You might feel the need to let people know in, in some subtle way that you could, maybe through, you know, you don't have a lot of time left. You don't know how much time you have left. Maybe you want to let people know, but you don't want to outright say it because maybe you're afraid they'll kill your family or something. Who knows? It's very dark what I think a lot of these musicians are involved with. And I think the more the more we shine a light on it, uh, the more we can do what the sun does to vampires, if that makes any sense. This reminds me of the Courtney Love series you did. Yes, the devil is behind music industry for sure. Music shapes whole generations. And yeah, I agree with that observation for sure. And this same individual sees Studio 666 movie Pearl Jam High Five. Yeah, so I again, I have Joy Hoover 4828 to thank for pointing me towards that movie. I probably would have discovered it eventually anyway, but that this was the exact comment that uh, caused me to look into that movie and sort of come up with this uh, further theories that I've come up with. So that's very helpful. So again, thank you for the comments. You know, um, when they're genuine and they're, they're thoughtful, they're very helpful and help add to the, you know, the conversation. Uh, this person put probably the one who took him down. I think what they're saying is that um, Martin Kirsten was probably the one who took Chris Cornell out. And I think that's possible. I don't know if that's a fact, but, you know, Martin Kirsten discovered the body. And he was also the last one to see Chris Cornell alive. That's generally suspect number one right there in most investigations. Uh, this person said, sounds to me like Lanigan is telling the truth and Tom Grant is just trying to establish that no matter what, he definitely wasn't there during the day. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I mean, people can have their opinions about whether Lanigan is telling the truth in his book or not about being in front of the greenhouse. I mean, Tom Grant flat out said, and he, and he hadn't even read Tom, uh, Mark Lanigan's book. You know, Tom Grant flat out said, uh, Lanigan wasn't with us at the house. When we went to look for Kurt, he wasn't in front of the greenhouse. Just flat out. If you know better than Tom Grant or you want to read into what Tom Grant says, that he's saying something that he isn't, I don't know what to say. What a great dive into Lanigan's connections. Most people cannot get their minds around how seemingly grassroots musicians could, could ever be tied into global agendas. But if you do enough research, this seems to be the case. Since you brought up Cornell, Tom Morello is a great example of someone that people assume to have organically emerged from a scene, but was actually well-connected being a Harvard grad with his father, a UN ambassador. And uh, his father, this is all, this, this can all be confirmed actually in Wikipedia. You can look it right up. And uh, I thought it was interesting that his father actually left very early, left uh, Morello's mom to be a single mom, among other things. But absolutely, yeah, Tom seems like, he, he sounds like a politician when he talks. I mean, he sounds very intelligent, almost like Obama or something. But I mean, you know, your typical musician doesn't sound like a politician the way Tom Morello does. And again, it really bothers me that Tom Morello, with 
with all these great causes he's always talking about and always being political and always, you know, all that whole thing about Leonard Peltier, free Leonard Peltier, you know, Mamiya Abul Jamal. I think he was all over that one too. Well, what about your buddy Chris Cornell, Tom? What do you got to say about him? Nothing. You know, Tom just immediately eats up the mainstream narrative. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, depression is a terrible thing, you know, uh, or whatever. I don't know what I don't even know what he said about it, but I know he didn't challenge the mainstream narr narrative at all, which tells me he's not raging against the machine. He is the machine. Murderer. The truth will eventually come out. I hope it does. And I think that's the end of the comments. The rest I covered in a previous blog.